Hello everybody. Today I wanted to ask the question, does your snake love you. Not everybody agrees on this. A lot of people who think strictly logically will say no. And a lot of people who think strictly emotionally will say yes. So I kind of wanted to tackle this from both ways and start by defining what love is in the dictionary. Love is generally defined as being an intense feeling of deep affection. So by that letter to definition, I'd have to say no. Your ball python, and quite frankly, all reptiles really don't have a deep affection towards you. But as with always, if you expand on that dictionary and look at all the other generally accepted definitions, there's other definitions. And one of them even says to need or require. By that definition, it of course needs and requires you. You provided its food and its water, its care, its cleaning. So by that definition, a lot of things would probably meet that. But I think it's a little bit more in depth than that. Can we really take something as emotional as love and apply just love? logic to it. Sure, a lot of people get into trouble applying only emotions to love, but it is an emotional thing. So let's talk about the different kinds of love. The different kinds of love would be, of course, something like that between a spouse or a boyfriend and girlfriend, which you'd better not have with your ball pythons. There is, of course, brotherly love or friends and such like that. Then there's the love that would be a little more along the lines of what we're talking about, and that would be parental love, which would be between a parent and a child, which I would probably also say encompasses a pet. Many people consider pets to be their furry or scaly, in this case, children. That's really the one that we would be looking at if it encompasses anything at all. So let's jump into the logical part of this. Scientifically, I just told you that probably it would be a no. Snakes have a more primitive brain, meaning that they're driven by a couple of things, which is survival and reproduction. And in survival, one of the most important emotions to have is fear. So to get that out of the way, can snakes feel emotion? They certainly can. And fear is probably one of the most potent emotions that they feel. And that is why a lot of times they get defensive towards Towards people or what other people might call aggression which is also a form of emotion and they can feel competitive we've done a video on how to get our males to breed recently and competitiveness amongst the males was one of the things that can spark them to breed better so competitiveness is there I wouldn't call it jealousy but competitiveness amongst the males in order to breed so anything that drives the ability to survive reproduce or reduce stress levels or increase their comfort level is what's really really driving your snake in almost all instances. But with that comes contentment. Being content and I guess you could use the word happy that things are safe. Being familiar with something is also very important to a snake. It makes them feel safe. It all comes down to your bull python seeking comfort, safety, and knowing that it can survive. So these are very primitive emotions and these are the ones that they're capable of expressing and feeling. But does that mean that they're incapable of showing love? Love. Well, science actually has some studies that might prove that they do. In 2020, while our world was falling apart, a psychologist named Noam Miller and his graduate student Morgan Skinner decided to do a study on eastern garter snakes and their ability to socialize. They took 40 young snakes and put them in sets of 10, putting a different colored dot on the snakes. They put them in an enclosure and had four different shelters in the enclosures. They would observe groups forming daily. And at the end of the days, they would separate the snakes and put them into completely different positions. Their objective was to see if they would reform their groups, and they did. They also often observed groups forming comprised of the exact same individual snakes in those groups, suggesting that these snakes could form cliques and preferred certain individuals' companies. And on that, they did a separate study at the same time of the personality of these snakes. It was a simple test, but they would put a snake and isolate it into an enclosure, putting it inside of its shelter. What they were trying to do determine is if any of the snakes would act differently, and they did. Some snakes would be more bold and be far more adventurous, checking out everything and exploring. Other snakes would be a lot more timid and scared and shy, and they would stay inside that shelter almost the entire time. Now, this is something I can personally speak on. They have personalities, 100%. In our last video where we showed off all of our snakes, I talk about this, in fact, how one snake is just a kind of a troublemaker. He means no harm, but he's always looking for food. He's highly 
intelligent and he behaves more like a reticulated python would. I have another snake that's very standoffish and very defensive, but has never actually bitten me, but has struck me with her head headbutting me two or three times. I have other snakes that are far more food motivated than others. And I have some that are far more timid. And then I have some that I swear they don't even know that they're a snake. Gwen here being a prime example of a very well-tempered snake that doesn't maybe know that it's a snake. Gwen here is my first ever snake and it's actually a boy. You can see here Gwen doesn't really mind me touching his head mostly just because I've done this for a very very long time. This is trust that I have built up through positive interaction. We talk about this a little bit in our video on fear. Now does Gwen like it? I don't think so. At the very least probably doesn't care but maybe it just slightly irks him and it's just like all right well he's not gonna kill me. So Gwen trusts me and what is one of the number one things in love that that you need is trust. So they're certainly capable of feeling trust. And on that topic, before I move on in our scientific study, they're capable of being trained as well. Maybe not as well as many other snakes, but if you look at any of, say, Brian Bartrick's videos or many other videos, they're starting to train these snakes or especially lizards because lizards are, are more intelligent. But reticulated pythons, stuff like that, that have a high capacity for intelligence, they're starting to train them with these different colored balls and such that they know when it's feeding time or it's not feeding time, I, I highly recommend checking it out. So personality, 110%, and they are very much different. So back on the topic of the garter snakes, when they would put these individuals in groups, they would mix some of the bold and some of the shy ones into groups, and suddenly it didn't seem to matter. Regardless of their individual personality, they would behave how the group behaved. If the group stuck together, they would stick together. If the group ventured out, it would venture out. They spent 94% of their time together in in their shelter and they found that the more snakes in that shelter the less likely they were to leave now not all snakes do this gardener snakes are kind of special and quite frankly highly underrated they are a very cool snake because they're one of the only snakes that do this. They're communal. You should not put two ball pythons together, but honestly, you should put more than one gardener snake together. They enjoy each other's company. Now, why do they enjoy their company? Well, they get a lot of benefits from it. When they're together, they retain heat a little bit better. They retain moisture and they have a better chance of surviving predators because the group can split and run in many different directions should a predator come to them. They're probably only going to get one of the snakes and the rest of the group will survive. Survive. And in a way, you see the same defense mechanism in crested geckos, but with their own bodies. They separate a part of their body to run. So they have learned that this is a method that they can use to survive and to gain heat and moisture from each other as well. But they also pass information to each other. Often some of the more brave snakes will go out and scout to see if something's safe and then the rest of the group will follow. So do snakes love you? Does Gwen love me? And I think yes but it is very different and it can be a different answer for everyone. I define the foundation of love as comfort, safety, and trust. There's a lot more that can be built onto that foundation, but that is the foundation in my opinion. And I think that they have that foundation and that's all. There's no buildings built on that foundation. It's not some deep, enduring love. You're going to get more affection from your cat. You just are. Mammal brains are more aligned. This isn't something that's going to feel bad for you or have empathy for you when you feel sad. That is make-believe. That is something called anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism is when we assign human-like characteristics and behaviors to an animal. And that can be also even to your dog and cat, although they're far more capable of expressing the same kinds of feelings and love that you are. However, that far more capable, it's still really far off. So it's even more far off with these animals right here. We love them more than they love us. It's a fact, but that doesn't need to mean anything. This is still an absolutely wonderful animal that I get a ton of satisfaction out of interacting with and caring for and exploring and learning about and getting to trust me to the point where I can do things like this and it doesn't move. I have worked with Gwen for so long. It is more than a breeder to me. This is my very first ball python. It will always be with me no matter what happened. I would keep this snake until the day that he passed away. And on that day, I will cry because I love Gwen. If you want to learn more about the differing personalities of ball pythons we have in our collection, you can check out our full rack tour right here.